Number 63. What is the ratio of the average distances that oxygen will diffuse in a given time in air and water? Why is this distance less in water? Equivalently, why is D, which is known as the diffusion constant, less in water? All right, so we spoke about this a little bit before in the prior problem number 62. All right, so the average distance is going to be equivalent to the root mean square distance. All right, so X sub RMS, which RMS stands for root mean square. You think of this as just the average distance. This is... This is basically an average when it involves a squared value of some sort, all right? Uh, and then you might say, well, where's the squared value? Well, essentially, we're talking about diffusion, and that deals with the kinetic energy of particles, and you know kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, and velocity is then related to temperature and all types of other stuff. Um, and therefore, the distance that the particle travels is a function of its velocity, but that's squared. And again, you know, so finding the average distance is a function of then the square of the velocity. So... Uh, to find the average distance, we take the root mean square. Okay, hopefully that suffices. In other words, don't worry about it. So 2 times D times T, all right? Uh, you know, capital D here, like we said, is the diffusion constant that you'll probably have to look up. This is right from the text. And the time, again, we're creating a ratio here. So the time is really, uh, doesn't uh, particularly matter. So we're trying to create the ratio. I guess we'll do air to water. All right, it doesn't say what to what, it just says air and water, but I'm going to do comparing air to that of water. So in other words, I'm going to look at this, I'm going to look at the ratio X sub RMS of O2 in water, excuse me, in air, because it told it, it told that to us first, that's what I said I was going to do, and then comparing that to X sub RMS of the O2 in water. So all I now need to do is just plug in the formulas, right, since this is a simple ratio. This will be the square root of 2 times D times T divided by, and this is, by the way, for oxygen. I'm just going to write O slash A for air. All right, and then this is the square root of 2 times the diffusion constant of oxygen in water times the time. Now, thinking mathematically, you know, you can essentially, you can cancel the 2s and the Ts. All right. Uh, why? Well, remember the square root symbol is just the special symbol for taking a certain value. I'll call it A here so we don't confuse it with any X's. And then raising it to the one half power. So really all of these are under the one half power. So the, this is two to the one half and so is this. So they're equivalent. So I can basically just cancel them. All right, similarly with the T's. So they go bye bye. And now what we realize is that, you know, to do this, it's just a simple ratio between the square root of the diffusion uh, constant of oxygen in air to that of the diffusion constant to uh, oxygen in water. And again, you can reorganize this too since both are under the square root sign. You can simply just take a big square root and do the diffusion constant of oxygen in air divided by the diffusion constant of oxygen in water. And this would be the appropriate uh, ratio now. So let's plug in the value. So we got the square root now of the Oxygen in air first, so here's the number, 1.8. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, divided then by the one with oxygen in water, so that's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9. And simply plug this on into your calculator, and what do we get? So I'll just move this over slightly, and we will get then a value of, let's see, square root. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 9. So about 134. Right, I mean, these have two sig figs, so I guess 130 should be fine, but you know, somewhere around there. So this is 130. Okay, it's a ratio, no units. So what this means is essentially, and you can always put this over one. So what this basically means is that the diffusion, uh, well, essentially the, the root mean square distance or the average distance, okay, that um, the oxygen mo molecule will travel in air is gonna be 130 times larger than the distance the oxygen will travel in water. And then ask us why. Well, let's take a look at two cases. Let's pretend this case right here with this box. Let me try to make that a little neater. This box, love autocorrect, right? Love autocorrect. So let's pretend here we're gonna have a certain substance. I'll put some dots in there, okay? Now we're gonna have another particular substance. So let's just make this the same. Actually, let me just copy this whole thing. And we're going to put more dots in it, though. Okay. Okay, that looks good. 
let me ask you a question. Same volume, okay, more particles. Now let's assume we're talking about O2, uh, well, we're talking about air, so we got, you know, if you think about the nature of air, right about 70 or 70 some odd percent is about nitrogen, gaseous nitrogen, right, that's N2. Another 20 or so percent is gonna be oxygen, right, and some other trace stuff, hydrogen and whatnot. Um, so which of these two, so let's just assume these are, you know, N2 molecules or O2 molecules, and in here we have H2O molecules, right? So, you know, roughly speaking, O2 and H2O, all right, the molecular weight of O2 is going to be heavier than that of H2O, all right? That maybe if you're taking chemistry, they might sound familiar, but let's just for right now simplify it, and let's just say that these are about equal uh, weight and equal size, okay? Each molecule, that is. So my question to you is now, if this is a certain volume of oxygen, and these are the number of, uh, or of air, right? I just decided to choose O2. Remember, it's O2 and N2, mostly N2. Uh, but if this is a certain volume of air, and we got these particles floating around, and then this is the same volume, but just of water, and we have this number of particles, which one's more dense? Water, right? This one will be the more dense one. Why? This is more more dense because it got more stuff inside of a certain volume that's what density is all about okay so let me ask you a question now pretend you're o2 doo -doo -doo, and you're trying to make your way through this you know uh sample or this volume of air how do you think your travels will compare moving through this versus moving through this boom bing Bong, boom, 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 boom. Uh-oh, well, we're getting turned around now. Oh, finally made it, right? I think it's probably gonna be easier to travel in air because it's less dense than that of water. All right, so that's why. So why is this distance less in water? Well, because water's more dense. The higher the density, the more particles there are per unit volume. The more particles there are, the harder it will be for oxygen to diffuse through because it keeps bashing into other molecules. All right, this should make sense, right? I mean, if you think about it, even in terms of a crowd, how, you know, you go to a concert, by the stage, it looks like this. How hard is it to get to the front of that stage? Pretty pretty darn hard, right? This is like a Dave Matthews Band concert, and uh, I don't know, this is like my band in high school. All right, so, yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time.